Hello, I'm Bruce Bird, President and CEO at VinFin, and thank you for joining us for Music and the Mind, Triumph of Spirit Over Sorrow, a benefit concert for VinFin performed by Duo Ami. Through this evening of music and artistic expression, we are coming together to experience the beauty of creativity and community and to support a strong sense of hope for the future. To all of you joining us, thank you for what you have done on behalf of VinFin and our mission, especially over the past year. Our staff, the people we serve, their families, our partner organizations, and all of our supporters in the VinFin community have been remarkable. And tonight we're celebrating the unity that helped us to persevere through this challenging year in fulfilling VinFin's mission. I want to extend a special thank you to the Boston-based piano and cello duo Alisis Kwan and Julie Ryman for generously sharing their talents with the VinFen community. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Duo Ami, and I know you will enjoy the program. Thank you. Hello, my name is Julie Ryman. And I am Alisis Kwan. And together we form Duo Ami. Uh, a piano cello duo based in Boston. Duo Me is dedicated to supporting the mission of nonprofits by organizing and performing benefit concerts on their behalf. In addition to being a musician, I am also a practicing physician at Massachusetts General Hospital. And I'm the founder and the director of EKS Music School in Quincy, Massachusetts. Given our roles in the community, we strive in particularly to uplift and give back to others through our unique voice, which is music. We perform in benefit concerts to both raise awareness of and to raise funds for nonprofit organizations, helping to make the world a better place. Given the pandemic, this year we decided to focus on a nonprofit working hard to alleviate the pain of those dealing with mental health conditions. While the physical effects of the pandemic have been devastating in and of themselves, the emotional and mental toll of the pandemic has arguably been even greater due to the ensuing isolation, xenophobia, anxiety, economic distress, loss of routine, and separation from loved ones. This is why we chose to dedicate this concert to Ben Fen. The composers we chose today are Rachmaninoff, Aransky, Tchaikovsky, and Schumann. They are known for all their loveliness of their compositions, and the fact that they also suffer significantly is less known. We wanted to emphasize both the beauty of their music as well as the difficult personal health struggles that they dealt with. We also chose artwork to go with each piece, and many of the paintings we chose were created by artists who also experience mental health conditions. We were particularly fortunate to be able to record our performance at the beautiful Shailen Lu Oceanside Hall in Rockport. Emotional well-being can be an elusive goal these days, and we hope that providing a combined experience of beautiful music complemented by striking visual art and the beauty of the ocean in the background, we can create a sensory oasis that all can enjoy. Before we begin, we would also like to extend our deepest thank to our kind sponsors, without whose help we wouldn't be able to create this program for WinFan community. Thank you, EKS Music School, Curtis Bryan Cello, Rockpot Music Shailen Lu Performance Center, and CNC Printing for your amazing support. Yes, thank you, and we hope you enjoy the program. Welcome, everyone. And thank you for listening. As we mentioned, the theme of our program, Music in the Mind, recognizes the link between creativity and mental health conditions through music and art. This link has been known since ancient times, with modern research suggesting that the prevalence of mental illness, particularly mood disorders, is higher among artists, musicians, and writers than in the general population. It isn't surprising then that many composers and artists have struggled with depression and other forms of mental illness while simultaneously creating works of genius. While it's important not to underestimate or downplay the suffering caused by psychiatric illness, particularly since effective treatments have only quite recently become available, 
it's at the same time inspiring to recognize the great works created despite the difficulties these artists experienced. We begin our program with Sergei Rachmaninoff, a Russian composer and pianist. Born in 1873, his compositions are treasured for their melodic expressivity, romanticism, and virtuosity. While tremendously talented as a performer and composer, he suffered his first bout of depression at the age of 24, shortly after publishing his first symphony. He described feeling, quote, like the man who had suffered a stroke and for a long time had lost the use of his head and hands. During severe bouts, he would completely lose interest in both playing and composing. However, despite his lifelong struggle with depression, he was largely able to overcome it and live a full, rich life, both with the help of his family, who interceded, and through treatment that included the new field of psychotherapy. He even dedicated his second piano concerto to Nikolai Dahl, the psychoanalyst who helped him overcome his first big episode of depression and to compose again. We will play his E-flat minor elegy, written in 1892. With its almost divine sadness, the elegy captures this human emotion without being depressing at the same time. The arc of the piece changes keys and rhythms with the use of offbeats in particular. The ending surprises in its almost defiant, soul-refreshing emotion. The visual artist we chose for this piece is Russian Jewish painter Mark Chagall, born a decade after Rachmaninoff in 1887. We chose his Windows in the Country, an early work of his, for Elegy. Chagall reportedly enjoyed gazing out upon a scene rather than being amongst onlookers while creating his paintings. We felt that the contemplative nature of the painting and its brooding quality lent itself well to Rachmaninoff's Elegy.
Anton Aronsky, our next composer, was also both a pianist and composer. He was born in 1861 in Russia, and while little is known of his personal life, as he never married or had children and he died at the relatively young age of 45 of tuberculosis, it is known that he suffered from depression and alcoholism. His mother, who taught him music, was an excellent pianist, and his father was a doctor and cellist who encouraged him in music. His music is melodic and direct, speaking to the heart. What is particularly lovely about the four pieces for cello and piano that we will perform is that each piece captures a mood, often mirrored in the title itself. We chose Mikhail Brubel as the artist to pair with Aronsky's four pieces, for several reasons. Like Aronsky, he was Russian, and he also suffered from mental illness. Born in 1856, he struggled with anxiety most of his life, and towards the end of it, from severe depression. Considered the greatest Russian symbolist painter, he is particularly known for his depiction of the supernatural and mystical. He spent most of the entire last decade of his life in and out of mental clinics and died at the age of 54. We chose Rubel's Oriental Fairy Tale for Oriental, his lovely Water Lilies for Romance, his pensive Roses and Orchids for Chanson Triste, and Lilacs for Humoresque, a woman drowning in lilacs akin to the abundance of notes in Humoresque, as you will hear.
Hello again everyone. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful music by these wonderfully talented artists as much as I am. They're just terrific. While we take a brief pause, I was asked to say a few words about Fin Fin and uh, what we've been up to in the last year or so. And I would start by talking about how wonderful our staff has been. You know, we had staff show up every single day in our 180 plus group homes across Massachusetts and Connecticut to support and take care of the people who were in those residences, including we had many staff who volunteered to stay overnight for one or two weeks at a time so that they wouldn't bring COVID back and forth into the residence and potentially put clients at risk. And we had outreach workers who delivered food and medicine and supplies to clients living throughout the community. We had administrative people who worked very long hours to make sure that we got the supplies in and distributed them to the people who needed them on the front line. And altogether, it was just a, a fabulous effort. We also invested a lot of money in things like technology, smartphones and iPads and cell phones for clients so that we could stay engaged with the people we were trying to serve to make sure they were supported, healthy, and got the services they needed. So all in all, it was a remarkable effort and we're very proud of Infen. We'd like to thank those of you who have been supporting us and for those of you who would like to continue to do so or who are interested in making a first time donation, you can go to www.vinfen.org slash donate now and make a contribution and it will be appreciated and it will be put to good use. So thank you for considering that. And now let's go back to our program for more music by these wonderful artists. We continue our Music in the Mind program with Russian composer Peter Tchaikovsky. Born in 1840, he began playing piano at age five but was sent away to school, reluctantly on his side, to be educated for a career as a civil servant at the age of 10. This forced separation from his family, coupled with the death of his mother from cholera when he was just 14, was deeply distressful and took an emotional toll that would last the rest of his life. While he was able as an adult to pursue a career in music, he would suffer from bouts of, quote, wearing, maddening depression, as he put it, throughout his life. He was also gay, which contributed to his bouts of despair given the social norms of the 19th century. His main source of relief from his depression was through music. He died at age 53 of either cholera or suicide, it is not entirely clear, leaving behind works of music of enduring beauty. We will perform his Nocturne in D minor, originally written in 1873. In 1888, Tchaikovsky himself arranged it for solo cello and small orchestra. The piece has a simple yet haunting melody, followed by a more lilting section in the middle, and then returning eventually to a reprise of the melody with a lovely intertwining second melody in the piano. The artist we chose for the piece is Vasily Kandinsky. Born in Moscow in 1866, Kandinsky helped to pioneer Russian abstract art and also understood the connection between music and visual art. We chose Kandinsky's Lyrisme Nocturne for the D minor nocturne due to its and the nocturne's timeless beauty.
Our final piece is by Robert Schumann, one of the greatest composers of the Romantic era. Born in Germany in 1810, he suffered from a significant mental illness, most likely severe bipolar disorder. His love for his amazingly talented and energetic wife, Clara, who was also a gifted composer and pianist, and hers for him, helped him battle this illness throughout most of his adult life. During his manic phases, he would be intensely productive. However, during his deep slides into depression, he would become almost paralyzed and unable to function. By age 44, his depressive symptoms worsened and became tinged with psychosis, and he committed himself to a mental asylum. He died there two years later at age 46. Schumann wrote the fantasy pieces, Opus 73, in just a couple days. Each of the three pieces evokes a particular mood. The first, tenderly and with feeling, begins in a brooding, slightly melancholy fashion, yet ends in a more upbeat mood, heralding the next piece, titled Lively and Light, which uses a triplet motif to convey a lighthearted and playful dialogue between the piano and cello. The final movement, Fast and with Fire, is an impetuous and headlong romp full of mercurial turns of phrases and which ends in a triumphant flourish. The artist we chose to pair with Schumann's fantasy pieces is 19th century Dutch post-impressionist painter Vincent van Gogh. Van Gogh suffered from mental illness as well, probably manic depression. The lack of available treatment likely contributed to his truncated life, as while popular imagery may depict the suffering of artists as an inspiration, in most instances, it largely inhibits and prevents creativity. We are thankful that he was able to create despite his illness. For the fantasy pieces, we have chosen three of his paintings. We chose almond blossoms for the first piece. Flowering plants were particularly special to Vincent as they represented hope. He made the painting as a loving gift to his brother Theo for the birth of his son, his nephew and namesake, Vincent. And we felt it encompassed the emotions of tenderly and with expression and feeling that Schumann wanted to evoke for this piece. We chose Van Gogh's Starry Night Over the Rhone for the second piece as it embodies light and energy. For the third piece, Fastened with Fire, we chose Van Gogh's Wheat Field with Crows because of its feeling of movement and tumultuous energy.
I hope you all enjoyed and were as moved as I was by this beautiful performance by these talented artists. Thank you again, Duo Ami, and bravo. And for all of you who joined us, we've appreciated your support and we're glad you joined us to celebrate creativity and community tonight. On behalf of VinFen, our board, and all of our staff, thank you again. We hope to see all of you again at VinFen events in the future in person. And until then, stay safe and healthy. And again, thank you for being a valued member of the VinFen community. We hope you have a good evening.